Okay. Yeah, we're good. And we're confirmed that we are live now, Chair. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Clifford. Right, I'll just switch uh, screens. So, welcome to Cabinet Procurement Committee, everyone. Uh, I think people are getting used to the drill by now, but we have to do the bit at the start um, where I let everyone know that this is live streamed, uh, that people have been in the press and public have been invited to the meeting. I think we were due one member of the press to attend, but I'm not sure we do scan in the list of names. Have them so far? They haven't joined yet, Jeff. Um, I'm just standing down. We don't have any additional members of council, any additional councillors, so I don't need to run through that bit. We've said it's going to be live streamed. Um, we don't have any members of the public, but if anyone does join you in the meeting, they'll be asked to leave when we do the section. Um, I'm going to hand over to Clifford to do the formal run through of the rules for virtual meetings. But before I do that, Councillor Selman, this is your last meeting before maternity leave. It is, yeah. <laughs> and no, sorry, I'm not going to ask you to sing a song or do something to mark the occasion. It just, it just felt well, nice. procurement meeting. There'll be other meetings before. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> absolutely. I'd like to hear one of your yeah. alibis, actually, Councillor Selbin. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of a challenge, yeah, before you're allowed to head off on that leave. <laughs> no, nothing will prepare you more for bringing difficult things into the world than Cabinet for Gorman Committee. <laughs> analogies uh, but anyhow all the best from all of us um and i believe oh i don't know if it's been formally confirmed yet actually who will be covering well, it has, too much in your absence. it has oh actually maybe not procurement so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be uh, updating people shortly um but on that note Clifford, over to you for the formal introduction if that's okay thank you chair um if i can just remind members and officers of the protocol um, that we have to follow. Um, I know that everyone has probably heard or a lot of people have heard this before, but it is necessary just to repeat it as we are live um, streaming. Um, if I could ask any member or officer speaking to only speak when invited to by the chair. Um, if you wish to speak, if you could just raise your hand like so um, and also ensure that any communication is through the chair. Um, can you ensure that your mics are muted when you are not speaking, apart from the chair who will not mute her mic the whole way through the meeting? Um, when speaking, please be succinct. If you're referring to a page number, refer to the page number and the paragraph number. And um, if I could ask that um, if you're referring to a specific page or even in the appendices, although they may be in the exempt part, please say that you're referring to an appendix and it is in the exempt part of the proceeding. If members or officers, if members wish to ask a question of the exempt items um, on the agenda, we would have to wait to the end of the all three items being considered and then move into part two. Um, if you're having any technical difficulties, if you could use the little chat bar at the top of the um, right hand of the page but please only use that for um, technical difficulties or if you think that myself or the chair may not have asked or seen you indicating that you wish to speak um, and just that if there was any um, public or disruptive behavior um, during the meeting the person would be removed and would not be allowed to continue uh, participating in the meeting thank you chair Thank you, Clifford. I think that was in part a gentle nudge to all of us to not get overconfident in how we've done quite a few of these meetings <laughs> as to how it all works. Uh, brilliant. So turn into the agenda and the bits at the start we always need to rattle through. So apologies for absence. We haven't received any. We have item two, no urgent business. Item three, does anyone have any declarations of interest? Brief pause, I'm assuming no. Great. Item four, we are not conducting any business in private. Item five, we have no questions, deputations, or petitions. We will one day, I'm sure. Um, which brings us swiftly on to. I'm hesitating because we've not had to agree any minute. Oh, no, sorry, my bad. Ignore me. Um, which brings us swiftly on to item six, uh, which I'm not going to read the whole title. Um, the procurement route, um, basically the procurement route for Wimborne Street. Um, we've actually got three very similar papers coming this evening, all within my portfolio area. So members will be pleased to hear that means I have very few questions, um, although the rest of you may see that as a challenge if you like 
try and uh, act this out on the procurement front. Um, and in my notes, I have that I'm handing over to Charmin to introduce Rachel. Did you say you just wanted to say a few words right at the start of all of these? Uh, yes, please, uh, Deputy Mayor. I'm just going to give a very brief introduction to the three projects um, and the housing supply programme, and then I'll hand over to the relevant project manager to introduce the project when we come to each one. And I did a terrible introduction to you there, Rachel, as well. So do you want to start by introducing yourself? <laughs> introducing yourself? No problem. So um, I'm Rachel Bagnall, and I'm the interim head of the housing supply programme, um, and I oversee the three projects that are being considered at this meeting. That's Wimborne Street, the Fairbank Estate Project and the Buckland Street Project. Um, and they all sit within the council's housing supply programme. Um, and the housing supply programme um, is um, part of the Hackney's building um, effort where we're building on um, underused council land, such as um, garage sites to deliver around um, 690, um, well, that's the current forecast, 690 new homes. Um, at least 50% of those um, homes are going to be affordable um, for local people and we're currently forecast to build around 237 social rent homes and 160 shared ownership homes um, and also improving um, spaces around the buildings and public realm and landscaping and providing new commercial spaces. Um, the, we've already got three projects on site in Clapton Park, um, and these three projects that you're considering today are in the Hoxton, all in the Hoxton West Ward. Um, that's Wimborne Street, Fairbank Estate, and Buckland Street, and they are going to deliver um, in total 186 new homes, um, 72 of which will be social rent and 34 um, shared ownership. Um, we've completed the design work with the architect and we have planning permission um, for Buckland and Wimborne and Fairbank, we've submitted the planning application and are due to go to the committee in November. And today we're seeking approval um, for the proposed procurement route, um, which was informed um, by some extensive soft market testing um, for each project. Um, and um, it's also worth noting that all three of these projects are due to receive GLA grant funding um, and there are very tight deadlines for um, starting on site for the three projects in order for us to um, draw down that money. Um, so please also note that we're um, seeking, um, due to the tight timeframes for GLA deadlines, we're asking for delegated approval for the contract award, which is one of the recommendations in each of the um, reports. So um, I've I'll then hand over, if that's all right, um, Deputy Mayor, to Sharmin, who will introduce the Wimborne project. Brilliant. Over to you, Sharmin. Thanks very much. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, committee members. My name is Sharmin Ahmed, and I'm man project managing the Wimborne Street project, of which I'll give a brief overview to now. So, Wimborne Street is a development of 59 homes plus one commercial unit in the Wenlock Barn Estate in the Hoxton West Ward. Of these development uh, of these units, 22 are for social rent, 11 for shared ownership, and 26 for private sale. The site is currently occupied by 28 garages split across two garage sites divided by Wimborne Street. To the north of the site are the res residential blocks Parr and Brackman Court overlooking Shoreditch Park and to the south of the site there is the commercial unit Wimborne House and further residential blocks Cropley and Wimborne Court. The design and location of the two new proposed blocks known in the project as Wimborne North and Wimborne South have been developed together with new landscape proposals. Further improvements to the, to, the street, to the streetscape will be delivered as part of the development, including um, improved play spaces to create better inter interconnectivity. The scheme was granted planning committee approval in September, and we are now seeking cabinet approval for the procurement of a main construction contractor. The ambition is to start on site in late 2021 in order to meet the GLA's funding deadline of March 22. This will enable the project to receive GLA funding. A single stage tender via the Hyde National uh, Partnership Framework, Lot 6, is proposed for the procurement of the main contractor for Wimborne Street as well as Buckland Street. An extensive options appraisal exercise was completed prior to, to this decision being taken and a range of alternatives were, were reviewed and rejected. The key driver for this decision to use this framework is that it enables the project to achieve the GLA programme deadlines. In order to reach the decision to use the Hyde framework, a range of frameworks 
available was reviewed by the project team and subsequently a soft market testing exercise was carried out to the Southern Housing Group framework and the Hyde framework as both lists included contractors that were considered suitable for this type of construction project. The results of the soft market testing exercise favoured Hyde over Southern due to the level of responses received and that this framework had the most suitable selection of contractors. Further to the soft market testing results, we intend to use an expression of interest process to establish which contractors will tender for the work. This process will reduce the numbers of bidders and is seen as commercially advantageous as several contractors advised that it was their strong preference to tender within a tender list. This CPC report has been prepared by the project team and includes commentary from legal, finance and procurement colleagues. I hope that you're able to approve this report so that the, progress, uh, the project can progress. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank you, Armin. And thank you, Rachel, for the introduction, which is also uh, is very helpful because I think we can sometimes take for granted in Hackney that because we deliver and build our own council housing, uh, we don't talk about it enough. Um, and so it's quite right to flag that this is a significant three schemes we're bringing forward tonight and a really nice piece of good news. Um, two um, very practical things. Uh, Clifford would not forgive me if I didn't say that they're exempt appendices as there are for all three papers, in case I forget to say it for the other two. And if you want to discuss those, we need to do that in the exempt section of the meeting at the end. Um, and just also a practical point that even though we're delegating the power to award the contracts, um, we will still get a report back to Cabinet Procurement that will give us a chance to um, see what the final process and, and contract agreed uh, looks like. Um, and one point, I'm switching hats here because I've got my procurement hat and I have my um, uh, housing supply hat. Um, I think it's just worth flagging as well with my procurement hat on. I've regularly challenged these uh, reports in the past around the issue of local labour and apprenticeships. Um, and just to say that this is something that we've had some really good conversations with the um, procurement team on um, and look forward to bringing forward to sort of some more concrete proposals of how we'll make sure we deliver that on some of these smaller site schemes or perhaps some of the more challenging schemes to make sure um, that we're delivering those opportunities uh, to hack new residents as we bring forward projects like these. Um, I don't know if the team want to add anything further to that, but that, I think that sums up where we're at at this point. Um, anyone have any questions? Just a comment, Deputy Mayor Renison, um, just welcome the report. I, you already mentioned apprenticeships, which is really, really important. And just thinking about work with schools as and where it's appropriate is always a positive thing. You made reference to child friendly borough and that was welcome to see, but just wanted to hear a bit more about how you continue in that vein, that it's not just a fault at the beginning of consideration, what does that continue to look like? And are you thinking about ways to continue to engage with young people around those spaces? Is that perhaps one for Rachel as a cross-cutting one for the whole programme? Yeah, it might be for me, yes. Um, so you'd, um, are you talking about how we're engaging with young people in the process of designing the new homes? Or, um, or in how we're engaging them with uh, the sort of getting work on the building. Um. More, more in the more in the interface around creating and shaping the space. Okay. Um, yeah. So we do um, some very um, on all of our projects across the housing supply program. We um, work very extensive. We do really extensive consultation um, during the design process. So um, we, our architects, work really closely with um, local residents and everyone who lives in the surrounding area is invited to participate in that. And we work. We always try really hard to make sure that we reach young people um, in the way, particularly in the way that we're designing the public realm. Um, because on these projects we're um, we're not just building homes; we're improving the um, the spaces around the homes, so better play areas, better public areas, better entrances to buildings, etc. So we're trying to do something transformative around the buildings as well. But we do um, work really hard to um, do full consultation and engagement with um, people, including young people, in, in the design process. And I come in obviously midway through design of this scheme so officers will correct me if at any point I stray but um, I would add to that that it's looking at how we engage across all age ranges so not just having one box and ticking it then that's children that's not that straightforward it's about catering for all different age groups um, and also about making sure we do it in a way 
and I'm going to get it wrong at the top of my head, but one of these designs has been sort of moving the spaces and areas around to make sure it's done in a very coherent way across the neighbourhood, um, so that you've got different age groups and different parts of the community able to enjoy the space together. Yes, exactly. Oh, what I uh, and what I would add, thank you, Deputy Mayor Renison. What I would add is that because of the work that we've done with Young Futures Commission and we have Youth Parliament within the council, we have that route of engagement. So you don't really have to do the work yourself and they are a good route through to ensure that you're hearing all those different voices rather than trying to get those different age groups. Actually, there are systems in place, but, you know, for the young children from, we've got, you know, children's centres up to children in um, sixth form. So we, we, there are avenues within the council that exist to ensure that you're speaking to them is all I wanted to add, but thank you. Thanks. Councillor Selman, are you indicating? I was, you know, it was just, um, so I recognise that uh, it's different across different programmes within the housing supply programme. It was to check, do any, did any of these projects have a sort of steering group set up or was it more about consultation with different groups? rather than a, there being a steering group as such. And I guess just in terms of the consultation that was picked up, if there was anything that had come out from that engagement, which impacted on the considerations in this paper about what we'd want to see in terms of the uh, what we were looking for from tenders. And I'm guessing by Councillor Selma, by steering group, you mean resident steering group? Resident steering group. And basically resident involvement, engagement, and how that looks like now and going yeah. forward. We're well, recognising there's a scope, because I know as a program steering board who Steering group have got a degree of kind of um, more active in involvement, whereas in other contexts we'll be going for more of a sort of general cons consultation. So I'm not, I wasn't sure which one this was. Yes, um, we we each um, housing supply program project is slightly different in the way that we engage with residents. But I might just ask Sharmin, do you want to just quickly run through very briefly how we've engaged on Wimborne to start with? Um, Yes, so we, we held three consultation events um, before planning, um, all on the Wimborne Street site. So we, we were working quite closely with the Wenlock Barn Estate and uh, they've helped us in kind of organising the, um, the resident engagement events and had helped us kind of spread the word to the community, you know, in terms of advertising the event to, to residents. And we had um, varying kind of attendance levels but of, of those who did attend we did have um, varying age groups just to reference that um, and as a result the the play spaces do respond to kind of different age age groups so we've got play spaces and landscape spaces designed for both um, for all, basically people of all ages Great. And it was just very interesting that it had come out of the, um, the consultation events, which then impacted on what we were putting in either in terms of KPIs or the kind of things that we were looking for through the tender. Um, in Sorry, terms of the KPIs. Is, is the cloud, I suppose, Councillor Selman, um, just to help, because I can see where officers are working out if they come at it from the consultation angle or the procurement angle. Mm. I guess. Um, Tracking back, and again, I came in midway through with these projects, but at each stage, it's been consultation, amendment of design, and going back to check. So it will feed into procurement, but to the extent that what we're procuring should by now be what residents um, are familiar with, and it's been altered and adapted to meet yeah. their needs and demands, if that follows. I'm not sure, and Rachel looks like she wants to come in if that crosses over directly into KPIs with set in terms of the procurement itself. It may, it may well not do as well. I'm just conscious that in, in other contexts where I've been involved with, sometimes some of the things that come through are resident concerns about um, the impact of construction and that kind of thing, where then, and if, if that was the case, it's the sort of thing that then might filter through to the reassurance we provide about the, the approach we're taking to, con, um, to, to who it is that we then have uh, carrying out the bills. But it may be that that's not a concern that's come up through the consultation process, in which case it would need to be reflected through. But it was just to check if it had done at all. I think that's a universal concern. <laughs> at the risk of making light of the challenge of building on complex sites in, in, in busy neighbourhoods. But Rachel, did you want to come in on that? Oh, I might just add that the um, the way we assess the the bids when they come in, one of the part of the quality assessment will include um, how the sort of construction logistics on these tight sites and, and ensuring that um, the way that the contractors build the projects is um, considerate to neighbours, etc. Because that is you're right, is lots of the concerns that people have, local people have, is is the disruption that they're going to experience mm -hmm. during the build process. Yeah, 
So it is part the of the procurement process in that we evaluate the tenders on that basis. Yeah. And residents quite rightly hold us to a very high standard on that and, and will inform us when our contractors are not meeting the standards expected of them. Um, any final questions from members before we proceed to agree recommendations? I'm going to take silence as no. Um, in which case, can I ask, uh, Rutima was just asking to flag, Rutima, correct me if I get this wrong, that delegated powers is we're delegating them if it's necessary that they be delegated to be the contract award. Correct, because I think with, uh, working with procurement officers, uh, they've looked at the program and we're saying that uh, there is a possibility that within the program time scale, we could still uh, follow the normal approval process in terms of bringing the uh, contract award report to CPC before, uh, for approval. Or we're saying in a situation where that's not possible, then the delegated power uh, request will take effect. Brilliant, thank you. So it may be back. but. Um, on that note, are we okay, uh, are members okay to agree the recommendations as set out? Should add my agreed to the chorus. Agreed. Yeah, was that a nod from Councillor Salmon? Yeah, it was me failing to take myself off mute, but agreed. Brilliant, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Sharman. Um, Rachel, are you going to stay for the remaining papers? Yep, <laughs> fantastic. In which case, we will move on. Let me just go back to my notes to check one we've got up next. I should say, Sharman, if you want to head off at this point, you are very welcome to leave the meeting as well. Also very welcome to stay to the end. But, uh, so next up, we've got item seven, uh, which is again, procurement route. And this time we're looking at Fairbank Estate and we have got Sophie here to introduce the paper. Oh, yeah, hi. Well, so Sophia, sorry, I said Sophie, didn't I? You yeah, know, that's, that's all right. <laughs> Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Sophia Bromfield. I am the project manager for the Fairbank Estate Project. Um, so just a bit of background on the project. The project's located in Hoxton West, as you know, um, on the north of the Fairbank Estate. Uh, it's on a two, it will be on a two-storey garage, what exists is a two-storey garage and car park. Um, and the site itself surrounds an existing tower block, that's a court, which will remain occupied in place throughout the build. The project comprises of 73 units within three medium rise blocks, so it's seven storey plus ground. At ground level, there'll be three new commercial units and a community room for resident use. There will also be an entirely new public realm introduced, which includes extensive infill uh, works around Thaxted Court, hard and soft landscaping, a play space, planting, car parking, and a new colonnade, which will connect two of the new blocks. Um, the tenure of the new homes will be 28 for social rent, 9 for shared ownership and 36 for outright sale, uh, which is 51% affordable. Um, so a planning application has been submitted and validated and we're hoping to go to planning committee within the next two months. Um, we are now seeking cabinet approval for the procurement of the main construction contractor. The ambition is to start on site in late 2021 in order to meet the GLA's funding deadline of November 2021. Uh, this will enable the project to receive GLA funding. Um, in terms of the procurement route, a single stage tender is proposed for the procurement of the main contractor. An options appraisal exercise was completed prior to this decision being taken and a range of alternatives were reviewed and then rejected. The key driver for this decision was that using this framework, sorry, key driver for the decision was that using a framework enables the project team to achieve the GLA program deadlines it also allows us to have access to suitable contractors for the Fairbank project. Um, in order to reach the decision of which framework to use, a range of frameworks available were reviewed. This was guided, this review was guided by our employer's agent um, and procurement team. Um, and subsequently, a soft market testing exercise was carried out on two frameworks. This included the Southern Housing Group uh, Lot 2 and the Hyde Frameworks Lot 7. Uh, both lists included contractors that were considered suitable for this type of construction project. The results of the soft market testing exercise favoured the Southern Housing Group, Southern Housing Group over the Hyde Group. Um, this was due to the nature of the responses received. Uh, the Southern was also chosen over the Hyde uh, framework as this limited the amount of contractors that would, would be invited to tender to both the Buckland and Wimborne projects and the Fairbank projects. So it was to ensure that we weren't uh, all three projects weren't going to exactly the same group of contractors. Um, 
So the report has been prepared by the project team and includes commentary from legal, finance and procurement colleagues. I hope you're able to approve this report so that the project can progress. Thanks. Brilliant, thank you, Sophia. And um, should also add, I realise that we talked about the cross subsidy model and talk about the GLA funding. And just for the um, and apologies, Rachel, I might be duplicating things you included in your introduction. But just for the benefit of anyone who is maybe viewing the meeting externally, it's worth flagging that we don't, we're not fully funded to deliver uh, council housing. So even if some GLA subsidy, which we will receive on these, um, we still have to go out, we have to cross subsidise, which means selling some of the properties we build private sale to help fund those we build for social rent um, and those for and we have the shared ownership offer as well so just to be clear for anyone tuning in to watch the meeting and um, can I ask do we have any questions for members there are three very similar reports so I'm not going to be surprised if we don't have questions um, and just to flag there is an exempt appendix I'm not guessing that people want to discuss it <laughs> if they did that had to be at the end but I'm going to take continued silence as uh, that we've covered questions off in the first round and ask if we can agree recommendations as set out. It's an agreed from me. Agreed. 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 Brilliant. Is that fine, Clifford? Yeah, we're getting the nod that we did it properly. Um, brilliant. Thank you, Sphere. Likewise, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting or equally welcome to head off and get started on your evening, uh, which brings us on to the third paper. Um, and this is the same, the selection of procurement route. Um, and this time it's Buckland Street. And we've got Bronwyn to introduce this paper. Yeah, hello. Um, yeah, so I'm Bronwyn Thomas and I'm the project manager for Buckland Street. And I think I have to apologise for repetition because, as you say, the report is pretty similar. Um, so Buckland Street is a development of 54 new homes and one commercial unit also in the Hoxton West Ward. The design comprises three villas along Buckland Street and then the commercial unit faces west at the end of the site facing Clumbury Street. Of the 54 new homes, 22 are for social rent, 14 for shared ownership and 18 for private sale following the cross-subsidy model mentioned earlier. The project is close to Wimborne Street and does follow a very similar approach to procurement with a very similar programme. The site is currently occupied by 54 garages and hence priority for new homes has enabled this site to become a site for development. The neighbouring blocks of Crondall and Cherbury Courts sit to the south and west of the new development. The design and location of the new blocks has been developed together with a new landscape design that improves the setting of these existing blocks and includes new play spaces, including a ball court. Further improvements to the streetscape are also delivered as part of the development, new pavements and road surfacing in Clumbury Street and Buckland Street. So the scheme was granted planning committee approval in early September and we're now seeking cabinet approval for the procurement of a main construction contractor. Our ambition is to start on site in late 2021 in order to meet the GLA's funding deadline of January 22. This will enable the project to receive GLA funding towards the social housing element of the scheme. So as for the procurement proposal, a single stage tender via the Hyde National Partnerships Framework Lot 6 is proposed. This follows an options appraisal being completed prior to that decision being taken and a range of alternatives were reviewed and then rejected during that process. The key driver for the decision was that using this framework enables the project team to achieve the GLA programme deadlines. Um, in order to reach the decision to use the Hyde framework, a range of other frameworks available was reviewed with guidance from our employer's agent and then subsequently a soft market testing exercise was carried out that included the Southern Housing Group and the Hyde framework. Both lists included contractors that were considered suitable for this type and scale of construction project. The results of the soft market testing exercise favoured Hyde over Southern due to the level of responses received and that this framework also had the most suitable selection of contractors. Further to the soft market testing results, we intend to use an expression of interest process to establish which of the contractors wish to tender for the work. This process is to reduce the number of bid this process to reduce the number of bidders is seen as commercially advantageous as several contractors advised it was their strong preference not to tender if there was an overly long uh, tender list. The report has been prepared 
by the project team and includes commentary from legal, financial and procurement colleagues. So I hope you're able to approve this report so that the project can now progress. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Bronwyn. Yeah, it wasn't very fair to come last on three <laughs> very similar papers. Um, right. And likewise, <laughs> likewise to flag this is an exempt appendix. Um, and I think we've sort of thrown an extra bit in about the housing supply programme for each paper. So I think for this one, we can perhaps add in uh, again for anyone external viewing around our sort of our keeping communities together approach and the fact that as we develop and bring forward these new homes, those council rent properties will be prioritised in local residents to make sure they get um, on those new homes as they become um, available. Um, any questions from colleagues? No, brilliant. Can we move uh, straight to agree in the recommendations? Agreed. 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 And again, it's Agreed. Fantastic. That's all for. Mm. Yep. And a nod from Clifford. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Bronwyn. We've now got final few bits of business uh, to get through very quickly to the end of the meeting. Uh, item nine, any other unrestricted business considered to be urgent? We don't have any. Uh, item 10, please can we note the dates of Cabinet Procurement Committee for the remainder of the year? Uh, item 11 asked me to exclude the public and press. I don't think we need to do that because I don't think we're going to discuss any exempt appendices at items 12, 13, and 14. And we have no items of exempt budget. So uh, thank you, everyone. And that brings the meeting to a close. Wow. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Chair. Thanks, Thanks, We've bye got bye. Ca Council Selman. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. <coughs>